Welcome to episode four. Today, we are gonna talk about why we lie. I lie, you lie, we all lie, lie, lie. Why a liar? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I got it in my mind. Thanks, Joel. That's some deep <laughs> theological stuff there. Oh, uh, I found mind. some crazy statistics <laughs> online about lying. All right. Where are the most lies seen? Resumes. 40% of resumes have lies on them. And then you want to know a really scary one? 90% of dating profiles. <laughs> Not surprised. Have <laughs> on dating sites have lies. That is so scary. It says by age four, 90% of children have learned the concept of lying. And it is estimated that 60% of adults cannot have a 10 minute conversation without lying at least once within those 10 minutes, an average of three lies were told. <laughs> okay. Everyday living. 12% of adults admit to lying a, to admit to telling a lie often or sometimes. And here's the funny thing. And the about, rest are liars. Exactly. <laughs> like, we're Come asking on. people to tell the truth about lying. <laughs> and you know they'd be lying. They'd be lying about so I'm sure the stats lying. are higher than that. 80% uh, of women admit to telling harmless half-truths occasionally. 31% uh, of people admit to lying on their resumes, which we already talked about. 13% of patients lie to their doctor. I think that one's higher. Because, okay, honest admission. When you filled out your doctor paperwork, have either of you ever lied about your weight? Oh, Many no, times. Weight? No, because I know they're going to weigh me. Oh, well, I've screamed, yeah? at the, I've screamed to the scales, you liar! When I've gone to the doctor, and I, I try to get everything taken off my body that I can before I get on the scales. Oh, I do too. Yeah, That's I'm appropriate, like, obviously. Yeah. You know, can I come I, in on a limit? This just happened to me. And they'll ask me, like, uh, do you want to take anything off? I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, here's I mean, my, my phone, own. here's my yeah. wallet. And then they're like, I even, you, they're I like even, you can keep your shoes on. I'm like, no, 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 no. The <laughs> shoes are coming off. <laughs> I even take my glasses off. Well, of course. There's a lot of I weight. have actually before taken my earrings out. I'm not even going to lie. Right, let's stop there before. <laughs> Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Uh, it says 32% of patients stretch the truth to their doctor. 30% lie about their diet and exercise regimens. Especially around Taco Bell. Anyhow. Okay. If you listen to a previous episode, if you know, you know. Episode one. Okay. Enjoy. Um, six lies are told daily by men to their partner, boss, or colleagues. Three lies are told daily by women to their partner, boss, or colleagues. And it says lying is considered more common among phone calls than face-to-face -face chats. One lie in every seven is discovered as far as liars can tell. I think that's a funny one. Wow, yeah. And it says 70% of liars claim they would tell their lies again. Americans t tell an average of 11 lies a week. And if you keep multiplying that out, let's say if we only told four lies a day, like took the average between men lying eight times a day, women, or six times a day, and women doing three, we take the average, go to four. I mean, if we multiply it out, that could be literally over 1,400 lies. And therein lies in a year. the problem. And therein <laughs> lies the problem. Okay. Um, do you want to really feel convicted? No. Joel we, does. Come we on, skip? convicted. Okay. Is here's the, the thing. Skip to the good part. Yeah. Here's, here's the thing. Okay. And we are going to get to the good part in a minute. But for the sake of those watching us online on our YouTube channel, um, I just want y'all to be honest, and I want you to raise your hand if you have ever told these lies, okay? Are you talking to Jim and I? Or She's looking at you. Because here are some, the most common I'll lies. I'll play. I'll okay. You're going to play? We're going to play? Are you going to play? All right, ready? Okay. I forgot. Oh, Lord. I mean, it's in like, I knew, but I forgot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm fine. Nothing's wrong. <laughs> um, I was stuck in traffic. The, the Starbucks line traffic <laughs> yeah. was long. Yeah, right. Inside or outside? Both. Um, my phone died. Uh, oh! My, no, does that count mid-conversation with someone you don't want to talk to? <laughs> Sorry, later. No, my phone died. Um, I had no way to contact you. Mm, I've used that. Really? I, I have actually used that one. Yeah. Um, I never got the message. Yeah. Never got, <laughs> never got the email. You want to be a therapist, like... No, um, I couldn't get any phone signal. 
Well, that's true because just outside of town where we ate last night, there's a place literally down the road. I know. I'm not saying when that was a true legitimate excuse. Oh. I'm saying you use that as an excuse I'd like to pull all my hands lie. back because I've really <laughs> never lied. <laughs> I have <laughs> never lied. I didn't understand the thing. <laughs> pull those hands down. I now, that's even. the only one you got me. <laughs> you did this whole time wrong. No, I didn't. He this is of all of our data. Okay. I'm lying right he's, now. He's lying about lying, but about not lying. Line. Okay. There we go. All right. Oh, so, this crazy statistics. We in Houston, we have a problem. I, I no know. I don't, I don't even know why. I mean, honestly, why these statistics are what they are, except for the fact that there are reasons that we lie. And yeah. and sometimes the reasons that we lie, it's for social graces, right? Oh, yeah. And right. so yeah. I was having a conversation yesterday, and someone said, well, I, I have to lie if the truth is going to hurt somebody. Mm-hmm. Or I have to lie if I want to keep that friend, because if I tell the truth, then that's going to hurt her so bad that, I mean, it could really do damage to our friendship. And so we got into this really interesting conversation. And I said, when my kids were little, I taught them a triangle. And the triangle is this. Arm the words I'm about to say. Are they true? Are they kind? Are they necessary? So sometimes things can be true and kind, but they're not necessary. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they can be necessary and kind, but not true, Mm -hmm. right? And so I think it's really interesting to think about those three words. Um, so I've done the introduction on lying, and what do we do about it now? Well, I want to know. I think we all just got Fs. <laughs> on our test? I know Joel for sure did. <laughs> did. I did, too. Yeah, on our test, we were, were in either Probably good or bad D- company. minus, maybe. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And, of course, there's other reasons people lie, too, like to shift blame, avoid confrontation, to get their own way. I mean— mm-hmm. Those earlier ones are not, I mean, they can be serious, but yeah. sometimes lying is is really damaging in relationships. I mean, of course, we can get into gas lying and uh, gaslighting, and then we can, you know, talk about betrayals. And so, you know, I don't want to make light of this. Yeah, That's right. very, <clears throat> very challenging and hard. But, you know, we talked in this last episode about self-deception, right. but now we're talking about deceiving others. Yeah. So what do we do about this? You alluded, if I may, real quick, to gaslighting. And you both have heard this from me before. I just made this up one day. The three types of lies, there may be more, three types of lies. L-O-G spells log. Law, a lying, a common nomenclature is I told a bold face lie. It's actually, you can Google it. That's one usage. But the original usage is a bald face lie. Nothing on my face. I'm just looking right at you and lying. So you either... To, to lie three ways, L-O-G, lying, just look right at you and lie when I know the truth. O is a big one. feels like it gets left out a lot. It's also in the Bible, sins of omission. Mm-hmm. The O is omission. You're not asking, I ain't telling. I've asked, often asked people I've worked with in counseling, do you think your spouse would want to know, or this person you're in relationship with, would they want to know that? Would it matter uh, impacting the relationship? Lying, O is omitting and G is gaslighting when I know the truth, you know the truth, you're telling the truth, and I know, and you buy, you and I both know you know the truth, and I'm going to just say, no. We've talked about, I think, on other podcasts in the movie Gaslight where the guy would kind of monkey around with the lights and turn them off. And you, you never turn those lights on. She knew she did, but it has this kind of mind game that goes on, lying, omitting, or gaslighting. Mm-hmm. So those are very functional. I try to use as a simple inventory for people and Hey, in our relationship now, have we bald face lied? Have we omitted anything we ought to know in this relationship? And am I gaslighting you? That's really good, yeah. Jim. And I think I've said before in relationships, and I've even said this to my kids before, if you'll just tell me the truth, mm-hmm. we can handle the issue together. Yeah. But if you lie about it, you're going to damage the trust so much that you're going to have two big issues the original issue, and now you're adding on top of it the issue of lying. And I think as we Mm -hmm. do this series on self-awareness, it's really good to address this because sometimes, I don't know if it's because we self-deceive first and justify that, then creating this 
lie to other people, or if we lie to other people and then try to self-deceive and justify it just to kind of make a way to keep lying about something. It's almost something. like chicken and the egg, isn't it? Yeah, which yeah. is first. first. I, think it's, I think it's circular, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, one of, I think one of the things I find really interesting is um, that the there has to be a benefit to the lie. Like, there's a reason why these statistics are what they are. There's a yeah. reason why people participate in them. There's a reason why it seems to be, based off of some of these mm -hmm. numbers, there is almost a hardwired natural inclination to tell these little white lies, you know, just to get out of a situation. So, like, the question is, what is the benefit that we believe that we're getting out of the lie? And the image that I kind of have is, imagine having this massive waterfall, you know, and it's coming your way. And you think that you can stop the waterfall by just uh, participating in the line. So the, the one lie is like a brick and then you keep adding it all up and you think that you're keeping the waterfall back. But the problem is there's just more and more water that's back there. Eventually those lies are going to collapse and fall apart. And when it collapses and falls apart, instead of the regular stream of water that would have come and you would have just addressed it and dealt with it, mm -hmm. now you have a tsunami of water that's coming. So there's a greater consequence of all of these stacked up lies than the benefit that is the deception that the lie is going to give you. Now in John 8, 44, I think one of the, again, this is just important I think for us to, to grasp is that lying and deception is the favorite strategy of the enemy. So if we just think about it from this like spiritual standpoint, our participation in lying is a participation in the tactic of the enemy. And we just want to like take a step back and say, is that what we actually want from ourselves? Do we, and I'm not saying that you do this or I do this, but if we're aware of that's what's actually happening, it might be a guardrail that can help us mm -hmm. in kind of fighting it. But this is what uh, Jesus says in John 8:44. He's talking to this group of people and they're asking all kinds of questions. And at some point Jesus gets frustrated and he goes, and he says this, you are of your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desires. Notice this, the desire language. He was a murderer from the beginning and mm. does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he speaks from his own nature because he is a liar and the father of lies. Now, in the previous episode, we talked about the origins. We talked about the serpent and in the Garden of Eden. So you can go back and listen to that. I won't unpack it again, but I do want to talk about the progression of the lying that the enemy does. And, and here's kind of how it works itself out with the serpent, Adam and Eve. First, um, the serpent questions the validity of the truth. He questions the validity of the truth. Did God really say? And then this is really important. Then after you're discombobulated in a sense, then the actual lie takes place, right? Mm. Uh, no, you will certainly not die. And then the lie by itself is not uh, substantial enough. The enemy then reinforces the benefit of what that lie might be. When you eat, you will be like God. So there mm. seems to be this kind of three-part mechanism that's happening with lying. One is the validity, the, the distortion around reality. Well, if there's validity and distortion around reality, that's the perfect place for an actual lie to be because you're disconnected from what is actual true. And then the presence of the lie, but in order for that lie to actually have any weight, you've got to convince the other person that there's a benefit to that lie. Mm. And this is why it's so dangerous for um, any, any of us. That's really good, Joel. And I would imagine, too, when we participate in the language of lying, which is the enemy, we also are helping him do his work for him. Yeah. Because when we lie and spread lies, that that is like helping the enemy. This is my this is a side note that I always have to attack when we talk about the enemy. We've at times had this have this belief that the enemy is equal to God, right? Like the enemy is omniscient, omnipresent, he's in multiple places and multiple times. The enemy is a created being. In that sense, he's limited in time and space. There is one enemy and there are malevolent spirits and, and evil forces that are out there. But what you just said, Lisa, is so important. What if we're actually just helping and aiding the, to, to multiply the impact of evil in the world? And one of the ways that we can do that is by participating in lying, which the enemy is the father of lies. Yeah. I've been in situations before where... I'm having a conversation with someone and I know they are lying, but they don't know. Or they they have so twisted something in our brain that 
the truth to them has become whatever protects them. Mm. And so that's also where it can get incredibly damaging in relationships. So Jim, help me here. If I come into your office and I say, I have a significant relationship where there is a pattern of lying, either the other person is lying Mm -hmm. or I've been lying about this thing and I don't know how to course correct, what advice would you give me? Well, first, I'm going to say, do you trust what you see? And if a person can take a moment and kind of uh, quiet down, they'll say, you know, I really feel like I am seeing, and I have sometimes even evidence appearing that this person is uh, out of congruence, that they're saying this, but I've even got evidence that this is not true. Or if not evidence, I've got a pretty good gut feeling, and there's been a pattern over and over and over. So I say, do you believe what you see, and just go to your moment, just to your gut. And if your gut is saying, "Yeah, this is this is not true," what's going on? Whether it's gaslighting, lying, or omitting. So, do you trust yourself with that? And then to look, and I always look at the history of things. Like maybe, how long has this been going on? I could just as likely get, you know, it's been actually going on our whole relationship where this person's been lying, omitting, or gaslighting, or no, something's happened because I felt like we had real integrity in the relationship. And it's just started to come on recently. If you take the word we use so much, right, an affair, like an adulterous affair, and someone could be proven that they had never had an adulterous affair before. So obviously, if they make that shift and are in infidelity, they can do things like starting to blame the innocent spouse. You sure you're not having an affair? Or again, back to Shakespeare, methinks thou dost protest too much. Or you say, yeah, starting about a year ago or six months ago, I don't know what's going on. But something's askew here. Mm -hmm. Something's out of alignment. Say, well, let's just investigate that. Mm, That's really good. Because I think when we are interacting with someone, and I'll just speak for myself, sometimes I so desperately want to give that person the benefit of the doubt because I'm naturally wired to believe the best about other people. Mm -hmm. So it's incredibly dysregulating to me when when someone that I want to believe the best about when their words that come out of their mouth do not match the actions sure. that I'm experiencing from them. And that can be so incredibly dysregulating. So besides investigation, what would you tell me to do? I'd like to borrow the words you just said. If I'm going to, and I get it, if I'm going to give someone else the benefit of the doubt, will I back up and in tandem right away give myself the benefit of my doubt? Wow. Where I could sit and say, wait a minute, what I see appears real. Uh, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. And then I think without having to go deep into some investigative process is pay attention to your internal world, your gut, praying God show me wisdom, uh, reveal to me the word of God implies actually in several places that what someone covers, God will uncover. What's done in the darkness will eventually be brought into the light. Lord, am I seeing this right? Open my eyes. God, help me to see these things. Am I walking in truth? By the way, is there anything in incongruency where I'm out of alignment myself, like I'm lying or being self-deceived? And then I think to take it out, I always use that old Acts 8, one thing I borrow from it, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the other parts of the world, put people on each one of those concentric circles, a couple of good friends, maybe my personal board of directors, and say, hey, I'm not gossiping about this spouse or this person, but I have some concerns here. Let me tell you what I see. If you hire a security system company to come in, they'll come in and say, okay, you got a problem here, you got a problem there. Just kind of with with people and say, do I do, do I sound crazy here? And then sometimes the that personal board of directors could say, when we see this, again, when I've said when common sense makes good sense, seek no other sense, you'd be surprised or not. And some of your closest friends may say, No, if I were you, I'd be feeling the exact same thing. And usually people who lie, even if there is, quote, pathological lying or their conscience is seared as with a hot iron, if I've learned anything, anecdotally, just duct tape experience here, the lying person, I mean, I believe about 100%, will eventually start leaving breadcrumb trails and will lead you right to it. It will become, they just can't hide it. It may not happen tomorrow, but in time, those secrets are going to come up to the light. Okay, let me ask you a hard question. Yeah. When there's a pattern of lying, omitting, and gaslighting, mm-hmm. is that emotional abuse? There's no question in my mind about it. And okay. I would say if I'm overtly lying, yeah, 
disclaimer, right? We're human. We're real. We are. You know, one other thing about this podcast is what they see on this set is the same thing. And what they listen to is if we're have, we just had lunch. We're friends. We talk about things. So here's the thing. If something like that is going on more than the stats at the beginning where we were all admitting like we, we've shaved the truth, whatever. And now into the serious business, if I'm willfully lying, looking right at you lying, and that means I know the truth. I'm not a sociopath or I'm not deceived. I know I'm lying to you or I'm omitting like <clears throat> you didn't ask me, so I ain't, I ain't telling, but I know you'd want to know or I'm gaslighting, which is definitely abusive. I don't want to put the abuse, emotional and verbal abuse, like our friend Leslie Verdick and our colleague Leslie mm -hmm. talks about, just on gaslighting. I want to say when I'm willfully lying, I know the truth, and or I'm omitting you're not asking me, I think absolutely those are both emotionally and verbally, even if non-verbally, verbally and emotionally abusive. Wow. All three. So, okay, now I'm going to turn to what if, I have been lying to someone significant. So let's flip the tables really quick. Mm -hmm. um, and I walk in to get advice from you and advice from you. What are you guys going to tell me? How do I fix what I have so clearly lied about? Yeah, I think one of the things I would start with is a question. And so the question is, is this something that you've done? Is this something that you are doing? Or is it something that you failed to do? Mm. So theologically, when we talk about sin, typically it's two categories, and Jim's actually already mentioned it. Um, sins of omission and sins of commission. So when it comes to lying, I want to use those same categories and just put it into that, um, that same language. Uh, lying of omission is a type of passive lying. And lying of commission is an active type mm -hmm. of lying. We've done a lot with the active part, but I want to talk a little bit about the passive part. That word omission, it actually comes from the Latin word omitere. Now, this is really interesting. It's defined as the failure to do something um, one can or ought to do. And it's that ought to do that I think is so vital. And so in that discussion with this person, I want to first understand, are you even aware that you have a responsibility mm. to do this? Or, back to our previous episode, are you self-deceived in this? And if they are self-deceived, I want to then unpack what is that source of deception. I love what Charles Spurgeon says. He said, sins of omission, again, are very plentiful because men excuse themselves so readily. Mm -hmm. So the question we need to discuss, and I want to unpack lovingly and kindly, but also assertively, you know, with, with attention to the detail is, um, in what ways are we allowing ourselves to be excused from the responsibility and the consequence of these types of lying, either uh, through omission or through commission? Mm, so good. Okay. Hit us with some of the therapeutic wisdom here. Joel and I talked uh, off camera that he'll bring therapy in, and he, you do so wisely, my good friend. And that I'll bring theology. And I just don't want to separate these two, right? Mm -hmm. A couple of things in Greek, be continually in the mm -hmm. tense, confessing your sins one to another. Yeah, it ought to be an active program. And coming in saying, I need to continue to do that. First John 1, 7, but if we walk in the light, and if you're bored, take First John 1, 7, and it's positive, negative, positive, negative. Every other verse, it is amazing. Truth, light. Darkness, light. Truth, lying all the way through, but 1-7 in 1 John, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, it is there, that's where we meet. That's where we fellowship one with another, comma, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Borrow the sticky note. In a relationship, for every rip, there needs to be a repair. So if you've lied, and I'm not worried about what the other person does, they're all kind of rationalizations of, do I say it, do I not? But to come in and say, look, especially, watch, the more intimate the relationship, the tighter the rules have to be. Mm -hmm. The more intimate the relationship, the tighter the rules have to be, like a mm -hmm. marriage, right? And so to say, there are some things I've realized, especially walking in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit's revealed this to me. I hadn't seen it before. Psalm 139, search me, O God. See, there's something I'm missing. For every rip, there needs to be a repair. Or you keep, after a while, you just end up with, you know, relational confetti. And I don't want that. So I come and say, there's some things I need to clean up like I work with couples. So here's a weekly check-in. And one of the things is I made up this thing called Fano Ross. My clients know what it is, but it's in the end, feelings, affirmations, needs. What do you need around this? Ownership. I need to own this. And then, oh, Ross, Fano Ross, for every rip, there needs to be a repair 
And then the second O is omission. What are you not telling me? Where am I with self-care, spirituality, and um, and uh, self-care, spirituality, and sobriety? Am I emotionally and spiritually sober? Now, I know that's all there. Go back and watch the tape later on Fano Ross. But it's helping couples to come in. But friends can do it. Kids can do it and say, I want to see, is there anything I'm not telling you to get this relationship back on the integrity basis it needs to be on? And I encourage people to do it daily. Check that in. The old timers had the daily examine Mm -hmm. to sit and say, I need to go clean this up. There's Mm -hmm. a repair that needs to be made for the rip that I've done with lying. Mm -hmm. And my my encouragement to that person, at least because you asked, like, what if you're the one doing it? At some level, we think, and if you're doing and you're in this situation right now, you think that there's a convenience Hmm. to your lies. You think it's convenient. You think it's going to save you from something. You think it's going to um, uh, lessen the pain of something, the anxiety of something. I just want you to know that there is no convenience when it comes to these types of lies. So good. It's going to have severe consequences. And so like what you said, Jim, the the rip and the repair, I mean, even just the image over here, it would have been so much easier to handle the rip of a half piece of a sticky totally. versus all of this confetti that's mm-hmm. over here, you know? Um, and so if you think that there's a convenience to it, there just is not. Yeah. One thing I'll say, and I think this would be a good Point to end on is lying affects trust. Trust mm. is the oxygen of all human relationships. And once there's been that rip, that break in trust because of a lie, truth has got to come in. And there's two ways that truth can come in, either by discovery or admission. And I can just speak from experience that If I have to work as the person being lied to, if I have to work to discover and then they admit to that discovery, but they never admit past my discovery, Mm -hmm. they they always wait to get caught in a lie before they admit the lie. Whereas if they would have just come clean at the beginning and just done a disclosure of what the truth actually is— I can handle that, and that will help me later as we have to rebuild trust. Mm -hmm. But if this person never admits more than I can discover, it's super incredibly hard to repair that trust. And trust, as you taught me, Jim, is built time plus believable behavior, and I want to add, and track record. So I love that. it's, It's like... If, and I, I think this is an old AA um, statement, nine miles in, nine miles out. Mm-hmm. Like, you know. And if, we stay as sick as our secrets to borrow from our friends at AA. And it's like, I don't know when you're going to get caught with that. Mm-hmm. You know what I've seen, though? It's like a cascading thing. When the day I get busted, and I know it, even for, quote, a narcissist, um, that's going to catch up with the person. Mm-hmm. I don't know when. But what's used by that time, the relationship is so foundationally destroyed It's like the foundation, the crawl space has been eaten alive with termites. And one day the whole thing collapses. I don't know Mm -hmm. when that is. Mm -hmm. So my side of the street, we talk about it a lot. Clean up your side of the street. Jimbo, am I lying to myself? Am I trying to lie to God? And am I lying to someone else? I reserve the right at any point. May I say, let's take the word right out. It's so overused. I reserve the reason to be able to go and say, I need to, Joel, I need to clear some things up with you. Mm -hmm. Big or small, whatever size. I want to be in integrity, and I need to clean some up. And when I do that, I have to let you go. You say, well, then you revise the history, Jim, our whole friendship. You've been lying. You go, yeah, I can't do damage control there, but I'm going to at least clean my side of the street up in grace, not just coming and blasting you. Here's some truth, but I want to be able to say I need to put some cards on the table. Hmm. And I think one of the best ways to start to rebuild trust, and that could be a whole nother episode, yeah. but just so we can end with like, okay, well, how do I, if I've been lying, then how do I rebuild that trust? I would say be eager to let them, if they've caught you in a lie, be eager to let them see whatever it is they need to see Mm -hmm. in order to believe the behavior now. Mm -hmm. And so don't wait for them to say, can I see your phone? Have you been texting someone you shouldn't? Be eager to say, hey, I want to show you the text that I've sent today because I want to start building a track record of believable behavior and doing that consistently over a good long period of time 
it is possible to start rebuilding trust. So yeah, see how I teach that? Yes. And you've had to hear it from me is I want this person, male or female, I want them to be structuring safety. Just what Lisa said, try to structure safety for that person to walk into if you've betrayed them. This person needs to be structuring safety. The person over here will then be searching for safety. You say, look, so brilliantly, the proactive nature you've stated, here's everything versus I sit back and wait till a person asks, Get ahead of it by saying, I want to structure safety with you. And all kinds of people, even after betrayal, can heal. Mm -hmm. One of the most repairing statements that I think a person can say um, to me if I've been lied to in a deep way, like a betrayal inside of a relationship, mm -hmm. one of the best things that someone can say when I get triggered in like, I fear, are you telling the truth or are you lying again or you know what's really going on here? One of the greatest things that that person can say instead of, aren't you over this yet? Mm -hmm. If they Lord. say that, that is just going to, that that negates a lot of believable behavior and we back right back to ground zero. But instead, if they say, of course you're feeling uncertain, of course you're struggling with trust, of course you're getting triggered mm -hmm. because the lie that I told you or the lies that I told you mm -hmm. have created within you this certain trauma that needs to be repaired. Of course, you're feeling that Love way. That. Now, what do you need? Do you need to have a conversation? Do you need time with yourself? Do you need to see my phone? Do you need to see my computer? What do you need? Mm -hmm. Because if that person is then telling the truth, they should be very eager to show you the actual truth. Mm -hmm. Wow, long episode, good episode on lying. And um, thanks guys for helping all of us know what to do biblically and therapeutically in a situation of lying.